So as you can see, this example is a little bit further along. I've still not done much work on the line section. My shape section is finished. I've just added some different shapes in the background, colored it all in with different color Sharpies, so that basically each shape is a different color. My color section is pretty far along, but I'm going to go ahead and finish this second half the same way I did on the background here, just so that you guys can see some of that color blending technique. My value, I still have to do the positive shape, the positive space. I've got my gradient in the background that shows dark to light. My texture one, I've not done anything on yet. That will probably be a separate video because I will do wood grain in the background, but then I'll do an applied, an actual texture on the foreground. The space one I've started in the background, and then I will be adding color using colored pencil to her face, basically, as I go. On my form one, I've still got to shade the actual forms themselves. And then, obviously, I have the one empty space because there are seven elements, not eight. So then, once I have all of my elements illustrated, my next step would be to look on the back and go ahead and start writing about and thinking about how each element then portrays one of the principles of design. And we will be talking a lot about that on Monday. And I will make sure that I post a recording, a discussion, different things like that. That way, regardless of whether you were in person or virtual, you will still get that same information. But right now, I'm just going to go ahead and start adding a little bit more layers to my red section here. Because one thing that is important to remember is that anytime you are shading or coloring, you are going to be working in layers. It is not going to happen all at once. So right now I'm just adding sort of this reddish orange color in here. And it's going to get a little bit lighter. I'm going to press down less as I move up toward where it's going to be more red. And then I will add a little bit more of that deeper red color as well. Because essentially each layer that you add is going to fill in some of those gaps. And then the color blends together a little bit. But mostly the color fills in the white gaps and your eye kind of puts the colors together. So now I'm going to turn my page and I'm basically going to do a gradient here which is going to get lighter and lighter as I move down. Mostly because I am just pressing down less and less. And now this gradient is going to go a little bit further down than my first one because this is my sort of red-orange color. So now I'm going to go back into that same area that I just did going the opposite direction a little bit, partly to clean up my edges and partly to fill in those white gaps. And I'm not going to be changing the value very much right now. Right now I'm just kind of matching the value that is around it and making sure that it fills the entire space. And I'm going to turn my page and do the same thing kind of along her face here. And you will notice that in this particular color section on this example, I do have a couple aspects of color happening. There's gradient in there, which shows that value does apply to color as well. But I also have some color schemes because I've got my warm colors in the background and I've got my cool colors in the foreground. But on top of that, I do have some complementary colors in there because if you look at the top, the top of her head is green, which is the complement to red, which is the top of the background. Further down, you see that I've got some blue and some blue um, green, which at that section on the background is kind of orange and red orange, which are the complements of blue and blue green. And then even further down, where I move into the violet or the purple on her body or her hair, 
I'm moving into my yellow orange and my yellow in the background, which are the complements of blue, violet, and blue, or sorry, blue, violet, and violet. So as you can see, I'm using several dis different aspects of color here in this one particular section. You don't necessarily have to use a whole ton of different aspects of each element, but the more obvious that you can make each section geared towards a specific element, the better. So here I'm just kind of extending my gradient a little bit into that white space before I go back in with my lighter orange color. Making sure that my gradient is nice and smooth because the smoother you can get your layers, each layer, then the smoother the overall effect will be. Your first layers are very important because you cannot fix your first layer with subsequent layers. You want to make sure that your first layers are nice and smooth and even as you can make them and then your subsequent layers will just help make the value and the color transitions better, smoother, and more accurate. So now I'm just going back in with some orange and I'm going to pick a spot sort of down here where it starts to get lighter, where the red starts to get lighter, and I'm not pressing down super hard yet, but you can see that it is starting to affect that. And then I'm going to press a little harder but then as I move up towards the red section, I'm going to be pressing down hard enough to influence the color, but not so hard that it takes over the color. I'm just filling in those white gaps, smoothing out the transition, and kind of getting lighter and lighter with my pencil as I move towards where the red is the reddest. So each time you kind of overlap colors like this, it's like a gradient that is darkest in the middle or most bright in the middle and then you press down less and less on either side as you go into the color that came before and you prepare for the color that comes next. So again I'm just kind of working into that section where I have the red where it's starting to lighten into the orange, just kind of filling in those white gaps, pressing a little bit harder each layer, not pressing down quite as hard as I will on my actual fully orange section, but definitely harder than I will in the yellow section or in the red section. Turn my page so that I've got the tip of my pencil along that edge. And then I'm going to press down less and less as I move down that space. So now I'm going to go back in here and right now not pressing super hard or anything, just start to bring that gradient down even more to prepare for where I'm going to be putting the yellow on top to get that sort of yellow orange color. So basically each layer that you add is another gradient and it extends the first gradient. The same is true if you are shading with just black and white. Each layer is going to extend the gradient and build on the one before and set up for the one that comes after. That is why shading with or without color is very relative because it influences what comes next, but also acts on what came before. So just bringing that orange down a little bit more, smoothing it out, going in both directions and using my circular motion if I need to kind of help smooth things out, fill in those little white gaps. Kind of working my way down until I'm not pressing down very much because then my yellow orange will go over that, or my yellow will go over that, and together the orange and the yellow will make yellow orange. So now I'm going to press down a little bit harder in this section where the orange orange is.
And then I am going to go ahead and first I'm going to use my yellowy orange before I use the yellow yellow. And what this is going to do is just make the transition into yellow and then white even smoother. So same thing I just did with the orange. I'm not going to start right at where the orange stops. I'm going to start a little bit below that and kind of go across. You can see where that line is. And then this I'm going to fade up into that section. And this I'm going to fade into the white so that I can do the yellow and the white on top of that. So here you can start to see the yellow, orange, and the orange mix and start to transition one into the next. And I'm pressing pretty hard, especially with the yellow and the yellow orange because they are both kind of lighter colors naturally. So in order for them to mix with the color that is already there, you will have to press a little bit harder than you would with some colors. Go back in other directions now to kind of smooth that out. Fill in those gaps. Remember the circular shading also because we don't want unwanted pencil lines. So you don't want to go so much in one direction that it just looks like lines. You want to make sure that you're constantly switching it up and keeping things as smooth as you can. So here I'm just kind of filling in some of those white gaps, just kind of blending the colors together more. Now I'm going to turn my page, mostly because for me shading and coloring in this direction is easier because now I've got one more gradient to do as I move this down the page. Going to smooth this section out a little bit more where the transition happens. So again, not pressing very hard here, but I do want to press enough that I have some of that color to mix with the next color. Go ahead and bring in just a little bit of yellow before I get to my white, just to help this transition be as smooth as I can make it. So there's not a whole lot of just yellow in here. Most of the yellow is sort of that transition between the yellow, orange, and the white. Bring that yellow down a little more. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some white in there. Pressing down pretty hard with the white because it basically is just acting like a blending medium to kind of blend together everything that's under it.
turn my page a little bit here and work my way up. Still pressing down a little bit less, even with the white, once I get into the area where it's supposed to be more of the yellow-orange and less of the yellow. Because I don't want the whole thing to look like it's got that white tint to it. And then my last thing to do is just take that deeper red that I had at the very top here because you can see the difference between this section and this one. So then what I need to do is just take that deeper red again and just add a little more up there towards that top section. Filling in some of those little white gaps, getting nice and close to the edge here. and just making that red a little more solid. So then now that section would be complete. So then because I want these white spaces to say white, the last thing I would do would be to go over them with just like a white paint pen, a very fine, thin white paint pen to make sure that they're white, white. And then this whole color blending idea could be used for the value scales that would make the form look three-dimensional. I could use it in the value scale on the value portion, going dark to light, but the two color blending is basically going to be useful no matter what two colors you're using. If you're using more than two colors, if you're just going dark to light, the same concepts apply. So this particular video is going to be very beneficial in a lot of different ways.